Hello scented friends, welcome back to my world of fragrance. Today's video is a follow-up to my previous video on brands I no longer talk about. These are the kinds of brands that I will be talking about and I would love to talk more about. These are underrated brands, they're in the premium price range, so above commercial prices, a little bit pricier than that, but you're getting higher quality and in my opinion you're getting your money's worth. Most of these brands are brands that I have loved for years, I've been wearing their fragrances, collecting them, <laughs> collecting to wear, and I think that you should absolutely check them out. So the first brand that is underrated under the radar is Goutal Paris. They used to be called Anique Goutal. Goutal was created in the 80s and rest in peace Anique Goutal. This brand is now carried on by her daughter Camille and yeah, is called Goutal. It is owned by a larger group at the moment um, but last thing I heard was that they're gonna go back to their older bottles. It's an iconic brand. If you are a freak head from the 90s or you've been around, you know, into this hobby since the 2000s and all of that, then you probably have heard or know this brand. I have loved them for a very long time. They do beautiful, fluttery, French style perfumery. These are more the delicate kind of perfumery. Um, if you're looking for things that smell like realistic florals but aren't very harsh, they do other things like they do incense, they do ambers, but none of their fragrances are super harsh. They're just beautifully made. They never give me a headache. And I find that these make great gifts as well because they're just not jarring perfumes. Very beautifully, delicately created. And so we're gonna get more complex as we progress. So we're starting out with easy, breezy, easily likable, beautiful French delicate perfumery. And then we're gonna go into the ah complex stuff, okay? So don't worry if you are looking for that. The next brand is from the UK. They are highly collectible. They come in these 30 ml bottles. They also have larger bottles now, but I have always loved the little Gallivant perfumes. You can stack them, you can throw them in your bag. And these are also in that easily wearable category. They've got citruses, they've got, um, one of my favorites is Istanbul actually. It's a resinous fragrance. It's uh, if you like minimal vanilla in your ambery resinous fragrances, then this is one that you would enjoy. And I just find them so lovely, you know? They're nice, uplifting fragrances. They're handmade as far as I believe. They're made in the UK and they are just delightful. As with all of the fragrances that I ever mentioned, please get samples, okay? Do not ever go out and blind buy something just because I said it's great. You have to smell it with your own nose, of course. But yeah, Gallivant, a reasonable price point as well and price quality ratio meeting. The next brand I've spoken about quite a bit in different videos and I could easily have I don't know how many there are in the range. Let's say there are 12 in the range. I could easily wear and own 10 out of the range. It is Peri Monte Carlo, or Paris, if you're saying it in English. And yeah, just love their florals. Their florals come in these white bottles. Other materials, well, actually this has two rows on it, so no, not other materials, but the black bottles are stronger, I think. These are more floral essences. I would say these are more simplistic, realistic. Like the rose, rose de mai smells like rose de mai, okay? Their jasmine smells like jasmine. Their lavender smells like lavender. And I can only recommend that you guys go out, if you are not familiar with how real flowers smell, go out to a flower shop, smell the flowers, know how they actually smell like in real life and then you can compare that to the perfumes that you buy because I can guarantee you then your nose will understand when people say that, you know, this flower smells synthetic. It smells like it's not the real thing, okay? And I like my flowers to smell like the real thing. So if you're into that, get these. They also have ouds. I am less of a fan of the ouds, I would say, because if I'm looking for oud, why go to the Western brands? Just go to the Middle Eastern brands, okay? <laughs> go to the people who know how to work with oud who do it all the time. Uh, is my advice, especially when it comes to price. So this one is Santa du Pacifique. It's a uh, sandalwood. So they have like everything for every different type of taste. I also have their parfum version of their Taif rose. This is an incredible rose. Wow, this wears so beautifully. 
I love a good extrait on my skin melting in the heat in the summer. So sensual, so lovely. And yeah, check these out. Also not crazy priced. I'm glad that I'm taking on this new direction because it's actually making me realize all of the amazing fragrances that I already had from brands that I kind of forgot. Oh yes, of course an extrait is gonna cost you more than an EDP or an EDT. That is just normal, okay? This is much higher content of perfume oil and you will feel that. If you don't feel that, don't pay the price. Don't pay the extra price. Try it out for yourself. So the next brand I feel like kind of gets a little bit of attention because they are beast mode. <laughs> Fragrances, they last, okay? These are Nicolai Parfum, created by Patricia de Nicolai, who is actually a Guerlain by Blood you know, that commercial brand Guerlain, which actually is one of the pioneering fragrance brands because that was their focus all along. Then they branched out into makeup and all those other things, uh, but they are a perfume creator brand. And so Patricia de Nicolai has her brand called Nicolai. They do have a certain style. Once you have smelled a few of these, you can tell when you're smelling a Nicolai. It's like they have this underlying lavender quality going on. Comment if you agree. And they last like they project okay they project and they last they're also well made but she definitely has this base that she adds to all of her fragrances that make them ah uh, like they just <laughs> they just cling and they last and they hang on to it so if you like their style that's an amazing thing if you don't like their style that could be a little bit obnoxious perhaps Ooh, that sprayer is good Cap Neroli, this is a nice Neroli that I feel like not a lot of people talk about either. But yes, Nicolai, and if you would like to hear more about any of these singular brands, leave me a comment down below. Next, we have a brand called Ruth Mastenbrook. They used to look like this. She rebranded and made them look more like this. Ruth Mastenbrook is a perfumer who has worked with loads of different brands and then created her own brand. And a lot of the awesome brands out there that you actually should look out for are brands that are named after a perfumer because these perfumers often have not been given very much creative freedom when they've worked for clients. They receive a brief, they're told, oh, we want you to make cotton candy or whatever, or make something that smells like this, or make something that smells like that. And so when they branch out and create their own brand, it's because they're like, ah, I'm tired of being constrained. Let me create my own thing. And this is where you see the perfumer really come to life, you know, show their true selves, their true artistry, what they've always wanted to create. And so Ruth Mastenbrook, Signature is a really interesting, like it's kind of weird. It's like pineapple-y, but it is also musky. I was out sniffing with a friend, as I do. I find perfume virgins and I bring them out smelling perfumes with me. <laughs> and this friend of mine is actually quite bro-y. So, you know, like very gym, tan, girls kind of guy. And we went out, we smelled MFK, we smelled you know, lots of different other brands, luxury brands, Serge Off, etc. And the one that he decided to get was Signature by Ruth Mastenbrook, okay? And this is because he had no knowledge of all of these different brands. He didn't care. He followed his nose and he ended up on Signature. And guess what? This fragrance projects also like crazy, lasts well, all of these performance metrics that people think you have to pay a ton of money in order to achieve, you actually can get for you know a premium a premium price point. I'm glad that Mastenbrook changed her bottles though. These are far more accessible, pleasing to the general eye, and all of that. Fire Dance is my personal favorite. It's Fire Dance. <laughs> it's kind of uh, smoky, but it's smoky that you can get away with in daily wear. It's not like you know crazy chimney smoke. It's just ever so smoky, but still can pass off as clean and daily wear friendly. So yeah, check these out. Ruth Massenbrook, she does not have very many fragrances in her line, but all of them, you can tell that she's spent a lot of time on each and every one of them and really has poured her love into them. The next brand is a brand that is so dear to me that, yeah, when people speak negatively about this one, I kind of get a little bit hurt. Now nah, I'm okay. But the brand is Serge Dutens and they are Shiseido owned now. The prices have gone up. They have kind of tried to redirect and stuff, but it kind of makes me sad when I see these on like online discounters, like heavily discounted. It makes me happy because then I can buy them <laughs> at a cheap price, but it makes me sad for the brand because I'm like, uh-oh, what's going on with this brand? 
but I hope that they're going in a good direction. I've got loads of Sage guys. And oftentimes when I'm walking through a department store and I try different things from newer brands and so on, I end back at the Sage counter and I try things again and it just restores my faith in perfumery. And I'm like, even though they're heading into this weird thing or you know the brand has been having I don't know I can't speak too closely <laughs> into detail about what's been going on with Sage but the creativity is still there okay the latest one that I've added is Fils de Joie which is a skank jasmine okay this is jasmine in your face with honey slightly animalic I mentioned this in my recent video on perfumes I've been loving and being such a close recent release, it still doesn't disappoint for us, you know, perfume, deep perfume lovers, people looking for things that aren't, you know, gonna be loved by absolutely everyone, but will be adored by you when you find the one that you love. The higher price range Lutens bottles look like these, the skyscraper Gratiel bottles, which are huge and weird. I don't have a problem with them though. I think they're kind of cool. They, they do fit in with the aesthetic if you ask me, but if you find these too pricey, you may be lucky to find them in the older format online somewhere, do your own digging. But I, I paid full price for these, Graziels, okay? And I was happy <laughs> because I was still like, this is still a lot better than a lot of other things. So I was happy to pay it. So Lutons I've kind of placed in the middle when it comes to complexity, darkness, thickness of the fragrance, uh, versatility, all of that, because you can find fragrances that are more versatile, you can find fragrances that are more deep. It depends on your taste. There are fragrances from the Lutens line that are actually recommended to people starting out, like Fleur d'Oranger is actually recommended, which is their orange blossom. Yeah, there's just something for everyone. They have a vetiver. They've got the smoke and fire, and they've got the delicates as well. So really awesome brand. The next one is Histoire de Parfum. I have three of their fragrances. I get them in this style. They're meant to look like books on a shelf. They do kind of have this dusty book-like quality, some of them, especially their amber, which I used to have, was like this, this gooey amber, but with this dusty book-like quality as well. It's just really interesting stuff. Histoire de Parfum. They're creative, okay? They are creative and they have different styles, different routes. Hemingway by Histoire de Parfum is probably one of the most copied fragrances by, you guessed it, super expensive brands, you know, reinterpreting or reusing that idea of Hemingway, which is a nice perfume commonly enjoyed by gentlemen. They also have thicker stuff like 1740. This is like a dark, dark Chypre and I I'm obsessed with it. They are just fragrances that make you think, you know, they're distinctive. And I know that when I first smelled this brand many years ago, I was wowed by it. They were very different to what else was out there in the department stores. So good for you, Histoire de Parfum. You go, Histoire de Parfum. Now we have a brand that is inching slightly closer to that complex corner. But what's funny is that this brand is majorly hyped for this perfume, L'Air du Désert Marocain as well as Au Coeur du Désert, which is the Ixley version of this perfume, ambery, spicy, reminiscent of, you know, an evening in Marrakech, Morocco. And so what doesn't get mentioned enough are the other fragrances from this line. They have Le Maroc Pour Elle, which is this gorgeous, gorgeous jasmine. They have this line, which is the Towerville Flash line, which are more affordable perfumes and they're focused on one thing. So their rose, their vanilla, their patchouli, their incense are just amazing. Great quality for the price. You know, I would say the price here is actually justifiable. Um, it's just that everybody else puts up their prices. And so, yeah, Rose Flash, this is like my favorite jammy rose, if that's your vibe, but tower, tower perfumes. You know that when a guy has a chemistry background and quit it all to get into perfumery, that he's gonna create something good, something magical. And so I love Tower. They have kind of an edge to them, so definitely try them out, but it always depends on what you're used to to begin with. You know, when you try something new, it depends on what your nose has been accustomed to in all of these years of you smelling different things. If it's something new and you know weird to you, you might be like, oh, okay, off put by it but definitely continue, okay? 
keep trying. I always go back to brands that I maybe didn't like at one point. So tower, love you, Andy. Now, another step into the complex. <laughs> We're going to talk about Naomi Goodsir. I have a video on their full line. This is the one that I have, what that says, my favorite smoky perfume. It's, it's meant to smell like a church that's burnt down. Very poetic, very amazing. They have Corpus Equus, which is a horse lover's dream. Their bottles are slightly better now. I think that she's kind of thickened the glass a little bit, but this is a poetic brand. Okay, this is fragrance artistry to the max. I will say maybe eight out of 10, no, nine out of 10 when it comes to fragrance artistry at the forefront because they also aren't unwearable. You know what I mean? They also have beautiful fragrances that you actually can wear. So check out that video on Naomi Good Sir if you would like to know more about this line. So the next brand is again, taking a larger stride into the complex, the deep, the thoughtful, the poetic, the artistry, we have Parfum d'Empire. And this brand is like one of the best brands that I've tried recently. This is the newest one out of all of these. The ones that I've spoken about up until this point, I have been loving for years and years. Parfum d'Empire, I have only tried this year. And Tabac Tabou is probably one of the best tobaccos that has ever been created, okay? For people who love a real tobacco it also has this um this daffodil underlying it's it's just oh, this is just a work of art it's just like oh I'm melting melting not one that i really wear that much in public because again i'm saying we're striding into the artistry right now now it's just not so much about fragrance function but more about fragrance experience and so yes parfum d'empire they also have some more easygoing they've got like your sea like salty fragrances marine like fragrances you know what i mean they've also got you know florals things like that but everything has a little bit of an edge everything has a little bit of artistic complexity you know that there are layers to the perfumes that were difficult to create and the materials here are also insane like great materials and then lastly, we have Eris, which was created by Barbara, who used to be a perfume journalist, I believe for many years, was like a vintage fragrance collector, created this line with Antoine Lee. And these are bodacious fragrances, like real bodacious. And the one that I fell in love with was Mabette, which is another skank jasmine. I love a skank jasmine. I love a dirty floral. They also have, uh, daywear fragrances they also have super super complex limited editions like mxxx <laughs> and other ones but these are thick vintage infused but modern fragrances that tell a story that are artistry that you have to think about you have to ponder they also have more accessible ones like belle du jour is like more of an accessible fragrance i would say more easily wearable but eris like do not not check out Eris if you're interested in artistry. And so thank you so much for watching today's video, guys. I hope that you enjoyed it. Please leave comments down below with other underrated brands, criminally underrated brands, not brands that already get exposure. We've had enough of those. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.